Hey you guys, it's Emily, and today I am doing a 24-hour readathon. So I am participating in the Basically Readathon hosted by Basically Brit. This is the third edition of this 24-hour readathon, and the goal is to read a book that has been on our TBR forever. Now I'm going to be bending the rules a little bit because I don't really have a lot of books that I've owned for over a year. Most of the books that I own I've read, or um, the ones that I haven't read I've acquired within the last year, so it doesn't really apply here. Also, I just got out of a reading slump and I kind of want to go with the flow instead of like forcing myself to read books that I'm not super into. I'm still very um, iffy about what I'm reading. I'm like, I'm so terrified of like being back in the reading slump that I just want to make sure that I'm reading books that I'm actually going to enjoy. So I thought that to begin with, I would start off by presenting my TBR and I'm going to show you guys the books that I have in my TBR nightstand right here. You can't really see, but I couldn't really find a good angle. So I have books here that I want to read that are like my... The books that are on my radar basically that I'm really into and uh, that I've either acquired recently or like I want to read them for specific reasons which I'll get into once uh, we get started. So the first book that I want to read and I am hoping to finish during this readathon is The Ladies Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. This is the companion novel to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue which I absolutely adored last year and I've owned this book for like about a year so I guess it counts for this challenge but I am reading this for the Triwizard Tournament readathon and it's like a Harry Potter themed readathon where you go through different tasks like in the Triwizard Tournament in Harry Potter. So the first challenge is to read a book that's historical fiction and so that's why I started reading this. I have to finish this by Sunday because that's when the readathon ends and I've only read like 80 pages so I've only read like this. I'm not really into it to be honest like I started it and I'm not super into the idea of continuing it. If anything this book just makes me want to reread The Gentleman's Guide because I seem to have enjoyed it much more but I, I, I'm not far enough for me to say that I don't like it. It's just I don't like it as much so far. But I also have some other options that I thought I would go through with you guys. I'm gonna try to do this quick because technically the readathon has started for me. I start at 6 p.m. now which is like midnight in Brit's time zone and I'm gonna do this until 6 p.m. tomorrow night. I might extend if I feel like it but I did want to start at midnight because I'm a grandma and I don't want to stay up until midnight. But I'll go through this very quickly. I have quite a few books to go through. I'm just gonna show you guys what are my options, I guess, because I will probably go back and forth with a lot of books. First off, we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've been wanting to read this. It's probably one of the books that I want to read the most by the end of 2019 because it got so much hype in 2018. Next, we have Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. This is the second book in the Renegades trilogy. I didn't love the first book, but I've heard the second book is really good and the first book ends on such a cliffhanger that I got the second book when it came out last year. Then we have Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This book got like mixed reactions when it first came out. Everyone was loving it but then some people um, reviewed it and didn't give it like a five stars. Next we have this Jane Austen anthology. Um, there are seven books in there but the one I would prioritize would probably be Sense and Sensibility or Pride and Prejudice. Next we have The Last Life of Prince Alastor by Alexandra Bracken. This is a sequel to The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, which I absolutely loved. I read it last year around this time of the year and I really enjoyed it. I was supposed to read it in October because spooky season, but I never got around to reading it. Next we have Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharan. Just the hype makes me want to read this book. I've heard such mixed reviews for this that I kind of want to read it so that I can make my own opinion because people either like really love it or really hate it. Next we have Winter by Marissa Meyer. This is the fourth and final book in the Lunar Chronicle series. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I've been reading the Lunar Chronicles. It is probably one of my favorite series of all time. Then we have Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welsh. I've heard great things about this. This is a QC contemporary set in Italy, so I'm just very excited to get to this. Don't know if I'll get to it today, but that's an option. Then we have Nevermore, The Charles of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. Heard great things about this, so I want to get to it. Um, I also have a Stargazing by Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel. I really loved Jen Wang's first graphic novel, which was The Prince of the Dressmaker. And since it's a graphic novel, I think it would be great for today. And then I also have Catching Fire by Susan Collins. I've been reading The Hunger Games. I want to rewatch the movies as well. And Catching Fire is my favorite in the trilogy. This is the second book. And finally, I have some holiday themed books. So I'll get through them very quickly. Um, I have The Chaos of Sending still by Jessica Brody, um, 10 Blind Days by Ashley Elston, and The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. I've been really wanting to read holiday themed books but there's the season-a-thon happening in December and I kind of want to wait until December to start reading them but I might cave and 
read one of them. Uh, this one is more like New Year's Eve themed, so I probably wouldn't read that one first. But these two are set during the holiday season, so I really want to get to them, especially this one. But this is like the buddy read for the Tissa season and so on, so I kind of want to wait. All right, so we've been through um, my little TBR nightstand. I also have one other book that I was currently reading, and that's Thrive by Kristen Baker Ritchie. This is a reread for me. I'm rereading this series. This is the last book that I have to reread before I read the rest. And I had started it a while ago. I made it to page like 64, so that could be an option. But to be honest, I'm not really in the mood for it. Uh, that's an option, and I also have some audiobooks that I could also get to. But like I said, we're going to try to prioritize the ladies' guide. And right now, I need to start reading because I've been talking for like 10 minutes. And the readathon has started. So we need to get to reading. But I'll try reading a little bit of this, see if I'm into it. And if not, we're going to switch over to something else because we don't want to get into a reading slump. So let's do it. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've been reading for maybe like 30 minutes. I made it to page, let me check, 122 of the ladies guide. And I don't know, I'm just really not feeling it. I don't know if it's because I just am not in the mood for it or if it's just that the book isn't as good as the first one. What I really liked about The Gentleman's Guide is that it was kind of chaotic and fun. Like Monty is a very chaotic character. But it was also really fun and witty and I just remember laughing and just having the biggest smile on my face while I was reading. And with this one, like, I don't know, I feel like it's not as much fun. Felicity is very serious as a narrator and as a character. So I just feel like we're not getting the same vibe and I'm just, I'm not enjoying it as much so far. Like the action and the plot is good. I just, I don't see myself being interested in this for now at least. I don't know what it is. Right now I just need to change and read something else. So I think I'm going to read Stargazing by Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel. It's super short and it's going to be super cute and I know I'm going to be having fun. So I think I'm just going to get on to reading that and then we'll see if I want to read some more of the ladies guide. But so far I'm just really not in the mood for it. Okay guys, it is 7.32 and I just finished reading Stargazing by Jen Wang, which means that I have finished my first book of this 24-hour readathon, so I call that a success. But I just thought that this book was so damn cute. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I just, it was really short though. I just, I feel like compared to The Prince and the Dressmaker, it was quite short, but it was super adorable, super heartwarming. And when you read the afterward, like there's a part at the end where the author explains like her inspiration and how this story came to be. And it's basically like her telling her story because she has been through the exact same thing that one of the main characters in this story goes through. I highly recommend it. It is adorable. I think it's more middle grade than like YA, but it is just amazing. I love the artwork as well. Like... It's super cute. I, I just, I love this so much. But yeah, you get an idea. So right now I should probably continue reading The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy, but I'm really not in the mood for it. I do want to curl my hair though, so I might do that while watching something on Disney Plus because I've been obsessed with Disney Plus. So I might do that a little bit or I might watch YouTube videos because I'm really behind on those. We'll see what I feel like doing, but hey guys. So it's now 10.20 and I haven't done any of the things that I was supposed to do. I actually ended up watching The Wizards of Waverly Place for like two hours on Netflix. Not Netflix, Disney Plus. But I think it's because I was dreading getting back into the ladies guide to Petticoats and Piracy. I think honestly right now I'm just not feeling it so I think I'm just gonna put it down and get into something new. I'm so afraid that this book is gonna put me back into a reading slump and one of the reasons why I was avoiding readathons lately is because I don't want to be challenged. I really just want to be getting back into my groove and like 
get back to reading stuff that I'm actually like enjoying and excited about. I really need to get back into a safe place with books. I just feel like I haven't really been doing that so I'm actually quite tired but I do want to get started with a new book before I go to bed. Maybe just read a chapter or two, get a feel for it. And I've decided to start reading 10 by Nates by Ashley Elston. I know I said I was going to keep this for Tis the Season It's On, but I just want to read a cute, fluffy, contemporary romance. I would be down for something sexy, but I don't want to read the Addicted series because I just feel like it's too deep, too dark. And I'm just in the mood for something cute and light. So this is going to be perfect. I just, I want to read the books that I feel like reading. And I've been wanting to read this book ever since I got it. So screw the readathon. I'm just going to read it because I feel like it. I probably will start reading this a little bit before I go to bed. <laughs> It is 11 o'clock in the morning the next day. I know, it's been like 12 hours since I last updated you guys. But uh, let's start with the live stuff and then we can talk about the book. So last night I went to bed at around 11. I read a little bit of 10 Blind Dates. I read maybe like 30 pages before I went to sleep. And then this morning I got up and I continued reading. And then, I don't know, I was feeling sort of emotional this morning and I couldn't stop crying. And I just, I wasn't really feeling great. I don't know, I just really was feeling emotional and I didn't really want to pick up the camera. However, I did finish reading 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. And this was so cute, you guys. I gave it a five out of five stars. It was just, so adorable, such a great Christmassy read. If you're looking for something holiday themed to read this holiday season, uh, this is perfect. I just, I really enjoyed it. It was so cute, so fun, and I just, I really enjoyed it. It was a great read. I'm so glad I decided to pick this up because it was perfect for my mood this morning. I, I think it might be one of my favorite contemporaries that I've read this year. I might be going to a friend for lunch, um, but she hasn't responded to any of my texts, so I'm not sure if this is still happening or not, but she still has time. We were supposed to meet at 12, but I wanted to check with her to see if it was still like going on, but she hasn't seen or responded to anything. So I got somewhat ready. I'm wearing a shirt and like uh, my jeans. I just got dressed. I'm going to do some skincare and possibly some makeup if this is happening. All right, guys, brunch is on. So let's do this. <laughs> Hey guys, so it is the next day and I just realized that I never really wrapped up this vlog So this is what I'm gonna be doing right now So I think the last time I updated you guys was yesterday at around noon I was heading to brunch and brunch was so much fun I hadn't seen my friend in a while so it was nice to catch up And after that we went shopping but we didn't really find anything So it was just more like aimlessly perusing um, Even like we went to the bookstore and even then we didn't really see anything that caught our eye So I came home uh, kind of empty ended but it was fine um so i came home at around three and then my dad asked me to run an errand for him so i went back to the grocery store picked up a couple of things came back home and i just wasn't in the mood to read so i decided to <laughs> continue my rewatch of the wizards of waverly place on disney plus and at first i was supposed to just watch an episode or two and just get back to reading but this is not what happened. I ended up watching episodes until dinner, which was like at around six. And then after dinner, I decided to rewatch Camp Rock 1 and 2. So this was my night. Not much reading was done. But um, let's go over what I read during this 24-hour readathon. So the first book that I completed was Stargazing by Jin Wang. This book has 224 pages and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. Then I read 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. This book has 336 pages and I gave it also a 5 out of 5 stars. Finally, I made a little bit of progress with The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. I made it to page 130. 31, which means that I read 51 pages of this book. So that means that overall I read 611 pages, which I found to be somewhat successful. I mean, yes, it is my least successful 24-hour readathon that I've ever done, but I did manage to complete two books, and I am feeling somewhat sluggish in a reading slump, so I just feel like this is a success overall. Thank you so much to Brett for hosting this 24-hour readathon. I had so much fun and if you guys want to check her out, I will leave the link in the description box down below. And I guess that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And I guess that's it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!